Hey friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so glad you're here. Each week on this show, I invite a girlfriend to join me and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. Today's show is brought to you by Stun. Stun's mission is to transform the definition of beauty and empower women to harness their own unique potential. That's why Stun Collective's plant-based supplements work to regenerate cells, stimulate collagen, and boost hydration while improving energy and cognition throughout the day and instilling calm and relaxation at night. Not to mention, Stun gives back 10% of their profits. Visit stun, S-T-U-N-N co.com slash happy or use the code happy at checkout to receive 20% off your first order plus free shipping. You guys, I hope wherever you are that fall has entered your world. We have dropped into the high 70s and 80s this week in Austin, Texas. And so we feel like we need to light our fireplace or something. So happy fall wherever you are. Happy October again. I'm so happy for this show today. Today, my guest is Jackie Velasquez. If you grew up in the 90s listening to Christian music, you know exactly who Jackie is and you loved her, no doubt, I'm sure. She's a multi-platinum selling, Grammy-nominated artist who sat down with me to share how she overcame the challenges of early fame, a failed marriage, and trusted God to turn her broken pieces into priceless treasures. Jackie and I talk a lot about the early years of her music and fame and then how after running away from all of it, God brought her back to him. Jackie still performs music, but her main focus has been raising her boys with her musician husband, Nick. Together, they navigate raising a son with autism, advocating that he will have equal opportunities to learn, play, and create. I really appreciate Jackie's honesty, and I know that you will as well. You guys, before we jump into this episode with Jackie, I want to say thank you for listening. Every time someone comes up to me, in fact, someone came up to me on Sunday at my local grocery store and told me that she loves the show. And I just look at everyone and say, thank you for listening. I really am so thankful. You guys are so kind with how much you love the happy hour and all of the guests that have come on here. I'm honored that I get to be a part of facilitating a show for you every single week. If you haven't already, we would love it if you would consider leaving a rating and a review of the show over on Apple iTunes or wherever you listen to the show. A rating and review helps our podcasts to be easily discovered by listeners searching for topics and themes. Recently, we did a survey. Thank you to those of you that did it. And we learned that about 20% of our listeners discovered the happy hour on their own through searching for podcasts. That is a lot. And we are so happy that you found us. If you want to help more women and a few men, I might say, find us, please rate and review the show today. All right, you guys, here's my conversation with my new friend, Jackie Velasquez. Jackie, welcome to the happy hour. I feel so happy just being in this hour. Yeah, this is going to be the happiest hour you've ever had. I think so. Just seeing your smiling face and your dimples, it makes it to where I can tell why it's called the happy hour and I get to be on the happy hour. It is so fun. I'm so glad to have you here. And I was like, Erin, you're not going to believe Jackie Velasquez is coming into my studio. Um, Thank you for coming to Austin. Oh, it's such a drudgery. Oh, right, I know. I had to suffer for Jesus. I went to the Galleria. I bought some clothes for my kids at H&M. I was suffering. The things we have to do. I know. The things we have to do. H&M, I love H&M for my kids' clothes. Do y'all not have H&M kids in Nashville? Well, we do, but I always feel like (laughs) other places are always better. (laughs) <laughs> That's like, we don't have these clothes, maybe. M- yeah. Maybe, maybe. These but are Austin H&M clothes. No, I love it. I love being able to come to Austin and being able to meet new people and, and uh, just have this experience. And this is my first podcast about like something other than just- Music. Music. You feel good about that? Well, I, I was telling my husband yesterday, I'm kind of nervous. He's like, don't be, why? Because my husband never gets nervous for uh-huh. anything. Do you get nervous for other things other than this podcast right here about something other than music? Hmm. Sometimes, sometimes I do still get nervous about certain things. What like, makes oh, you nervous? Like award shows. Okay. Well, I, okay. Also, um, is, when I have to speak in Spanish mm, in front of a lot of people, okay. I get super nervous. Is your Spanish, you feel it's, it's shaky? It's super shaky. Okay. I went ahead and married the only Mexican that doesn't speak Spanish. Oh, so you don't, you're not practicing. Oh, of course not. I have well, no one to practice with. My kids are so country that the other day they just you guys are in school. Nashville we're in Nash we're in Franklin Franklin okay yeah so the other day my youngest comes home from school and he goes mom 
there's this kid in my class, this boy, his name is Josie. And I said, Josie. He goes, yeah. I go, what color skin does Josie have? Because it's brown. I go, Soren, his name is Jose. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. I was like, Soren, Come you're on. Hispanic and you call them Josie? It's, that is hilarious. It's a real thing. My well, kids I'm glad are you so help country. Them out. Yeah, well, they have no idea they're Hispanic. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Do you think there's anyone that does not get nervous at award shows? Because that feels like this is nerve wracking. Um, probably no one get. I, I think everyone gets nervous. Or maybe like, you know, I don't, I don't know. Probably Lady Gaga doesn't. I don't know. I know. Did you see that movie she was in with Bradley Cooper? I did. I did. It was, man, it was stunning. It what broke was it my called? heart to A Star is Born. Star is Born. I ugly cried on an airplane watching that. I did too. I was on an airplane watching it. Ugly cried. I ugly cried. I was so embarrassed. I know. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've ugly cried on a lot of airplanes these days watching TV shows. Yeah. That's a, it's bad. I don't like to cry because I get uh, blown up. Yeah, my yeah. face just gets uh-huh. swollen. My and then eyes. you start like sniffling where you can't control it and it's For embarrassing. Sure. And people just look at you funny. Mm-hmm. But A Star is Born, I've been telling my husband, like, you got to watch this. You got to watch this. And he was like, I've been telling my husband. Did he thing. watch it with you? No, he hasn't seen it Okay, yet. so Aaron and I watched it and he was blown away. He loved it as well. It's a beautiful movie. It is a beautiful movie. Bradley, Bradley Cooper. Phenomenal in that. He does a phenomenal job. Yeah, You're yeah, correct. Yeah. And she does Oh my gosh. incredible job. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They deserve all the accolades and the awards yeah. for that one. Uh-huh. Um, so um, award shows. Do you get nervous when you go sing places? Uh, no. Okay. I, I don't. Just because I have this kind of newfound place uh, where I, I just ask the Holy Spirit to do the work, so I don't. That's even a think good about place it. to be, right? Yeah, I mean, I for there are many times in my life I relied on me, mm-hmm. it, me being in control. But I'm going to fail. I'm human. I have nothing. Yeah, he has everything. So okay, this is good. I was told you I was just nervous. I was out in Cal- California doing. Um, this TV thing, and I was nervous because it was new. Like I, yeah. I didn't, I like, didn't know what, what to gonna ask. What, I didn't know what to expect. I don't yeah. know how it goes, and so I was nervous. And so that, hey, let's just let the Holy Spirit do what He does, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, hello, how long have we been like reading and knowing about the Holy Spirit that He can do this? But here's my question: practically, how do you do that? Like, how do you go? I'm not going to rely on myself. I'm going to rely on Him. Is it prayer? Is it Scripture? Like, what does it do, look like for you? Um, for me, I kind of dive into this uh, place inside of myself where I'm actually asking the Holy Spirit to take it away, to take me away. Yeah. So it's just, for me, it's through prayer. It's yeah. just, Holy Spirit, do the work. Do the work. I have nothing to say. I cannot sing. You are what needs to be heard and seen. So um, I think that that is, I mean, for me, it's through prayer. Has that taken practice? It feels like a discipline almost, like that takes discipline and practice to actually well, it does because, believe that even. Well, yes. I mean, it's believing in something you can't tangibly yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine the other day. She's, she's, probably, she's probably my best friend. We uh, walk in the mornings when, our, when it's not hot. We walk in the mornings after we take our kids to yeah, school. Yeah, so starting again in October. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in October, we'll yeah. start back. But, and so we were talking about the Holy Spirit. And I was like, see, she goes, I can't feel him. And I'm like, but I, how can you not feel him? I can feel him. Like I get this like warm and goosebump sensation mm-hmm. of just like this kind of heat all over my body, mm-hmm. just feeling this presence. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful. It feels just so real. And it makes me want to cry when I, when I think, when I just ask for him to be with me. So I think that that takes practice. Yeah. It's not something that you can just, hey, Holy Spirit, it's something you have to just continuously seek and ask him to, to give you the desire to yeah. seek harder and yeah. more. So I have a question. How okay. did you, what how did you grow up and what what part of the church? Cuz I have a theory. Okay. Like I grew up Southern Baptist. Okay. And the Holy Spirit is like it's a thing, it's part of the Trinity. Right. But sometimes I don't think I was taught or learned. Do you know what I'm saying? You know where I know, I'm going I with know this? where you're going with this. Yes, I was uh, raised in a spirit-filled church. I love this. I just had this huge conversation <laughs> with Christine Kane the other day and she was telling me some things and I was like, "No, I wasn't taught that growing up." Like the way that she was talking about things, I was like, no, I didn't. No one taught me that. So this and is, I this is, this I is have amazing. a theory about this. This is okay. good. Okay, keep going. No, I just have theory? a theory of like, I don't think that, I think I've had to learn in the last 10, 15 years 
more about like the part of the Trinity, which is the spirit, how, more ways that we, I'm not tapping in to things that he wants to do for me because it's, it was scary when I was growing up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like yeah. I, it was almost like we looked at people who were spirit filled, whatever. Like, it's that like might, Casper. Casper yeah, the like, Friendly it's Ghost It's kind of like, yeah. We, yeah, weird. Yeah. But the older I get, I'm like, it's not weird. No, it's awesome. So see what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, see how okay. you, so how did your friend grow up? That's my next question. Well, she, she grew up in the Vineyard Church. Okay. So, I mean, she believes and she wants the Holy Spirit. She, that is something that's very important to her. I guess she probably wasn't as like, it wasn't as spirit filled of a situation mm-hmm. maybe in her upbringing, but um, she's very aware of it yeah. now. So like for me, I don't, I don't think I truly tapped into the Holy Spirit until, until much later in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I knew about it. For it sure. wasn't scary. It wasn't Casper. Yeah. But I'd never really considered the fact, well, I don't think I ever had to. Does this make sense? Yes. Because you felt like you could do it all on your own? Right. Okay. But then as I grew up mm-hmm. and challenges mm-hmm. and things started happening, I was like, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm scared to do this on my own. So I think that life's challenges and stuff being thrown at us, it, for me particularly, it made me, required me to tap into the Holy Spirit. That's good. He's, he was sent, you know, to be our comforter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I need that comfort yeah. um, as on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, moment, on a moment basis. Moment right. to moment Right, basis. yeah. Okay, I love that because that is so good even to think like when you said you kind of had to release this. And I know you told me earlier about this kind of letting go of control. And I can see that in what you're talking about. Yeah. Of like, I'm going to step on the stage and I'm going to do what God, you let me do. And I don't, I can't control what happens. I can't control what happens. Where else does control come into your life? Oh, God. Well, my children. Yeah. I right? mean, family. You have two kids. I have two little boys. Sixth grade, fourth grade. Yes. <laughs> My big one just started sixth grade. My last just started sixth grade. Oh. Yeah. So we just, we, I've got my last one in middle school. It's great. But does it make you a little sad? No, I'm not sad. I really, really am happy. Okay. Here's why I'm happy. Because I, I like big kids. Okay. Um, I, I was not a very good elementary school mom. Like I, I don't enjoy like the every party every month. Oh, you kidding? I am like, you love it? I love it. Okay. See, we need you. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Every every class needs, I don't know what they need me for, but we need you. Yeah, like I am room mom. <gasps> you I are. I am room mom almost every year. I couldn't be room mom this last year, the past two years, because I was on the board at my kid's school. Okay. And this is not my comfort zone, just so you know. But because I never went to school, uh-huh. because I was uh, traveling from the time I was, after fourth grade, we went on the road. So you I and never family. got to experience- yeah like school. So I'm kind of living You're like going through school right now? <laughs> yes. Every time I have to like sit at a board meeting with the principal, I would get kind of nervous. I'm like, that's the principal. Don't say anything dumb. I'm like, what? I'm an adult. I'm a grown woman. It's like What's you're wrong? the sixth grade girl and that got called the principal's yes. office. Yes. Yes. Um, but it's, it's really cool because I get to do those things. See, middle school for me, I never got to go to middle school. So when I was sitting in my son's IEP meeting prior uh-huh. to school, they were telling me that about like gym, like they change clothes at school. Right. I didn't know about that. And they have lockers. That's like stuff I saw in movies. That's like <laughs> exciting. And my son loves it. Uh-huh. But um, he's he's special needs. Uh-huh. So um, he's in a different class some of the time, but uh-huh. he's integrated in some of it. But I was laughing because I was like, of course he loves it. In the SPED class that he's in right now, they're teaching him life skills, like how to wash clothes. Yeah. How to cook. This could work um, out well for you. I know. I well, or his future going. wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I want to talk. You have a new book. Yes. Just released yesterday. And, but I want to go back because we're going to talk about that. But I am so intrigued about what it was like for you to literally be on the road since you were nine years old. Did you release your first album at 16, 17? I recorded it when I was 14 and it came out when I was 16. So, I started promoting that record prior to the release of it when I was 15. I have a 15-year-old, Jackie. Yes. I can't imagine him. Let, let me just tell you about my 15-year-old. He, uh, the first day of school, he sent me a picture of what he looked like. And I thought, did you really wear that all day at school? Like his shirt, 
<laughs> his shirt was buttoned wrong. Like I have a 15 year old and I can't imagine what your life was like to release an album. Were you just more mature for your age or this had been your life? It had been my life. Okay. I, I Prior to that, I'd already done custom records uh, with my parents. So my parents were, my dad was a pastor and he got called into the evangelistic field when I was nine. So I was the last kid left at home because my brothers were like, you know, nine years older yeah. than me. So, I mean, I had to go. So we left. And so I left school and left house. We, we uh, I think we rented out our house at that uh-huh. point. And so we just lived in our car. So we went from church to church to church, guest house to guest house, right. to guest bedroom to, to um, hotel to, well, actually never hotels. It was motels. I remember the first motels, time. Motels, yeah. I remember, this is totally a side note, but Motel 6. I remember we got to this motel and I was like, oh my goodness, you guys, the bed vibrates. Oh my god! Can gosh. I have a quarter? Can I have a quarter, mom? <laughs> this is so cool. And I didn't I know was, those were a real thing. I thought it was just in like I National Lampoon's that. Vacation. I didn't know. I was nine years old. I was like, this is the most exciting thing. It's like a carnival ride in a hotel. Can we just stop for a second? Why do people need a vibrating bed? I don't know. I'm sure that there's more to it, but I just, in my- <laughs> That is the weirdest thing. Like, it's like my husband grew up and he's had a water bed. Oh, those, my Isn't brothers that did too. That's so gross. It's I like, know. How can you sleep in that? And it's like a like a late, I'd be so hot. Oh, God. Okay, anyhow. And no, thank you. No, thank so you. So you, you, you remember yeah. the vibrating bed. Yeah. <laughs> Put some quarters in there, kids. You're on a little roller coaster. I was so excited. Mm-hmm. And my parents, of course, didn't say anything. And they yeah. gave me a quarter. Yeah. To, and I thought it was so exciting. Anyway, but um, so yes, we traveled from tra- and traveled. And so I just did my schoolwork in the back of the car. So- um, You were homeschooled we, before homeschool was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I actually was homeschooled through video, VHS tapes. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh-huh. Abeka, Abeka was the curriculum yeah. I used. Yeah. So, um, so then, so I mean, been- we did custom records. I did records with my dad, records with the three of us. I started doing my solo records um, on my own custom records. When I was 13, that's when they kind of, quote unquote, discovered me. Uh huh. So, and then, and then the rest was history from there. Like, what have you done? Like 18 albums or something? I have no idea. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I don't even know. Isn't that crazy? That's Isn't that terrible. crazy? I, don't I know, know. I remember I was interviewing a friend who's written like a gazillion books. And I was like, how many books have you written? She's like, I don't even remember. You know, you just, you put them out and there they are. Yeah. So, six, so you released your first album and um, it was very successful. Um, I think I read. The, tell me if I'm wrong here. It was the very first CCM album for a debut album to go gold. Am I right or am I wrong? It was the fastest selling solo debut album ever. That's what it was, I think. Congratulations. I think that's How'd you it, handle that as a 16, 17 year old? I actually never even thought about it because I was too busy to, to really think too much about anything. But you had people around you telling you this stuff, right? Yeah. I had tons of yes people around uh-huh, me. Yeah. Lots of yes people. The more success that rolls in, the more yes you get. And the more you can kind of become a brat if you want. Did you? Oh, I think I had some bratty moments. Really? Time, for sure. I mean, it wasn't that I wanted to be. Well, I mean, just, you look at what's happening. How do you handle that? Well, it's kind of like, it's, it's almost like people expect you to be. So you kind of play into what they expect you to be. So they're like, let's like cater to Jackie and yes. do all these things. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, okay, I'll play this role. Yeah, I'll, I'll play this. If you, if you know me in real life, that's nothing like me. But I kind of played the role that was- Given to you almost. Expected maybe. Expected and kind of scripted out for me, if you will. But, um, but I, I, uh, I never really thought too much about the success. Uh-huh. Now, hindsight, looking back, I go, yeah, that was really awesome. It was crazy but it was so busy and so compounding. It's like it just hit and you had to go, go, go. Yeah. I never even stopped to really smell the flowers. Do you remember the first no person you had in your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who was it? Besides my mom? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was actually my uh, husband. Yeah. Now, uh huh. he was my boyfriend then, but uh-huh. because he was a no person, I broke up with him. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he was like, this is not, this is, wow. Yeah, because I was like, you are too controlling. Uh huh. You're not going to boss me around. But he wasn't a yes person. He was not a yes person. And he like, like loved me for me. Mm-hmm. And he didn't care about the, any of the other stuff. And he wanted to protect me from myself. So 
But I couldn't see that at the time. Of course not, because you're you so gotta, dumb. Yeah, you got. I was so dumb. That was silly, right? Yeah. But it's amazing. Um, I had to go through so much after uh, when I when I broke up with him. That was when I was doing uh, filming the movie Chasing Poppy. I broke up with him, and a few months later, I started dating this guy, and we got we kind of we were dating, whatever. But I kind of married him accidentally, and intentionally divorced him. Mm-hmm. So I always say that because- And you had met your husband previously? Your oh, husband yeah. now? Yeah, my husband now uh-huh. was my boyfriend from before him. Oh before. my gosh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then after about a little over a year, we we broke up, uh-huh. we split up. So that was like, oh golly. I was just, talk about the shame that mm-hmm. you feel of like, really? This quote unquote CCM darling, she does a movie that the Christian industry does not approve of. Mm-hmm. And then she gets divorced. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my goodness. So it was like, it was a rough time. So because it was a rough time, I decided to run away. So I ran away. Literally? I I did. I moved to England. (laughs) Because you need to get out. Yeah. I didn't want to hear what people were going to say or think. I just wanted to get out of my glass house. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. so much to take for people who quote unquote disappoint. Yeah. Whatever. You know, we'll use our air quotes. Because people feel like they have the freedom to say whatever they want Mm -hmm. about someone they don't even know. For sure. But I mean, I I believe this. To whom much is given, much is required. For sure. Did I steward it well? Do you think you did? I don't think I did in all all situations. But was my heart in the right place? Yes. But did I steward it well? No. So would you go back and do things differently? I would go back and do things differently if it could lead me to where I am now. Yeah. Same outcome? Uh Uh-huh. But... A little different journey. Yeah. Different. Yeah. Yeah. I probably would have married Nick the first time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, friends, I know that you're loving this show with Jackie, but I want to pause for just a moment to thank our sponsors who make today's show possible. Today's show is brought to you by Greenlight. Greenlight Card helps teach kids how to be smart with their money with a debit card that's just for them that parents manage with a handy app. Greenlight is an easy solution to transfer money to your kids without having to search for an ATM to take out cash. Because you guys, my kids are always wanting the money. Greenlight also offers parents the ability to decide the exact stores where their kids can spend, the opportunity to craft customized chore lists, and an automated allowance function. I love everything about that. Greenlight believes that kids learn through doing. That's why the Greenlight app teaches lessons in trade-off decisions and money management skills that children will use as adults. The kids' version of the Greenlight app encourages them to monitor their balances, set savings goals, and track their progress. My husband, Aaron, and I believe that teaching our kids about money and how it works is a super important life skill. At our house, everyone has jobs that they do just because we do, because we're a family, but then we give them extra jobs, and when they do those, they earn income. Having the ability to transfer money to my kids' individual accounts is something I would love to do for them, and I can see this is so helpful for them, and I know that my kids would love being able to check their accounts and make plans for their future giving, saving, and purchasing. Join Greenlight today at greenlightcard.com slash happy hour. That's greenlightcard.com slash happy hour. Today's show is also brought to you by Third Love. Third Love is hands down the most comfortable bra that you will own. It has straps that won't slip and a tagless label. Not to mention they're lightweight. They have a super thin memory foam cups that mold to your shape. And here's the best of all, you guys. Every customer has 60 days, two months, six zero days to wear it and wash it and put it to the test. Then, thanks to Third Love's 100% fit guarantee, if you don't love it after 60 days, you can return it. And this is my favorite part, actually. And Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. A listener recently told me she ordered a bra, but she didn't love it. I told her to send it back because Third Love says they wash them and donate them to a woman in need. The listener reached out to me a few weeks later to share that not only did she return the original bra, but the Third Love team helped her get a new bra. And just like I always say, it's hands down the most comfortable bra she's ever owned. You guys, it really is a perfect bra. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. It's worth trying, you guys. 
Go to thirdlove.com slash Jamie, J-A-M-I-E, right now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash Jamie for 15% off today. I also want to thank our last sponsor for today's show, and that is If Gathering. You guys, this is a ministry that is near and dear to my heart called If Gathering. It is a ministry whose heartbeat is discipleship. They create tools, events, and resources to equip women to live out their calling and go make disciples. On February 7th and 8th, they're hosting a conference in Dallas, Texas for two days. And you guys, we wanna invite you to come. I have been to every single IF Gathering. I highly recommend them. It's going to be such a fun time of encouragement, biblical teaching, and a sisterhood of women from around the world. We're inviting you to come because we need each other. And we need a reminder of what's true. There's chaos in this world and there's chaos in our hearts. And for a weekend, we want to pause and remember that Jesus is our hope and peace in the midst of all of it. Every year, this event sells out really quickly. I'm talking, you guys, like minutes. So we have a special opportunity for you today to get 24-hour early access to register. Head on over to ifgathering2020.com to sign up for early ticket access. They go on sale October 15th, but you'll get to get your tickets on October 14th. We don't want you to miss this. Sign up at ifgathering2020.com. Okay, back to the rest of my show with Jackie. And you know what? Here, Even hearing you talk, it gives me this whole other understanding when we see young stars rise up to fame and the, the pressure that they're under, even probably even more now today with oh, the yeah. internet. Uh, which is just, can you imagine living your life with the internet? Oh my goodness. Like, and the smartphones, you can just take pictures and video anybody at any time. It's like, man, stay inside your house, never leave. Oh, I would not be where I am today if the internet was what it is now when I was in high school. I would have ruined my life. I feel bad for the kids nowadays. It's so hard. You talk about the shame from choices. How did you get past that? Because I don't think you still have that today. Uh, No, but- I mean, besides uh, running away to England. Yeah. Well, there, which there was, is a temporary fix. It, I was running from myself. Yeah. I, I mean, the, I was running from everything, but I still had me. Yeah, yeah. So so it didn't fix anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I think the shame, there's a chapter in the book that I had to write. It was called Sour Lemons. And um, it was my patch job trying to fix the fact I got married to fix a choice I made by doing a movie. It's just, it's a long story, right. but it's embarrassing. I'm not ashamed of it mm-hmm. because I believe that so many times in life, we try to DIY mm-hmm. stuff in mm-hmm. our lives when we don't need to, and we should not because yeah. we are not in control. Uh-huh. We have to hand it over. We have to hand it over and trust that God will take it because when we try to fix it, we're just going to make more mess. And I made such a mess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so you look back at that time, and you're like, I was trying to fix it all myself. Yeah. DIY my life. I was trying to DIY. And it doesn't work. It never works. I mean, well, how could we think we could? But we do. On like, we do more often than we care to admit, probably. So writing this book, you had to revisit. <laughs> yes. So much stuff. Yes, I did. But it was actually really good for me because it really forced me to unpack stuff. I'd always owned up to my own stuff, but it forced me to see it on paper Mm -hmm. and to see what God could do with it. Because there are times that God, He will rescript our lives when Satan has tried to do something. And He will rescript our lives through bad choices we've made. Mm. He will rescript our lives in ways that we had a plan. And He goes, no, 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 no. Let's go this direction. And you're going, wait a second. Like for me, with like my oldest son, I could <sighs> Nick and I, my, my husband and I both have been making music and we've been uh, singing for Jesus since, well, since I was nine and since he was what, 15. Mm-hmm. And we've been in ministry. And in ministry, you have to communicate, right? So here I'm pregnant with this kid. I'm so excited. 10 fingers, 10 toes, praying for the baby. Max Lucado, he prays over the baby while, mm-hmm. while he ends in my stomach. And I'm just going, this is this baby. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what ministry God has for him. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to hear him sing. I, it's going to be amazing. And he is amazing. 
10 fingers, 10 toes. And he sings beautifully. He's got perfect pitch. And he's autistic. Mm -hmm. He struggles to communicate. Mm -hmm. So how can God use him in ministry if he can't communicate? Because that's... That's what you know. That's, yeah. So, and when I'm talking about rescripting, I'm talking about this part. We, he rescripts through our bad choices, yes. He changes the path. He adjusts it from our bad choices and goes, okay, made a bad choice. Come on, let's get back up. Let's go this way. And then sometimes it's the devil. Okay, what he tried to do for bad, you're going to turn for good. Right. And he does that. And sometimes he rescripts it in ways you're going, now this doesn't make sense. How, how is this a part of your plan? This is not what I had planned. This is not, how can I, how can I have a child that struggles to communicate? Yes, he does have beautiful pitch, perfect pitch. But um, he doesn't make sense. He's, he scripts movies. He can watch a movie once, which is actually a superpower. He can watch a movie once and memorize every word from the movie. That is not the plan I'd had. Right. But that's the plan God had. Yeah. And so many times we have these dreams and, and we have all these plans, these dreams. And, and some of those are God dreams, but some of those are me dreams. And we have to understand and know the difference. I have a friend who her daughter has mm-hmm. autism. Mm-hmm. And she talks a lot about the same way that you're talking about her daughter and talks about how there are times for her, and this may be true for you, and I think other people could fill in the blank here with what it is for them, how we've had to lay down dreams, Mm -hmm. uh, dreams for our life, dreams for our kids, dreams for our future, whatever Mm -hmm. that looks like. And it sounds a lot like what you're saying. This is what happens. This is what happens. You you have all these dreams when this baby's in your belly and you're like, oh my goodness, this is going to be amazing. I have all these plans for my kid. He's going to be the awesome big brother. He's going to teach his little brother all this cool stuff. And then when somebody tells you, oh, your kid's broken, Mm. it's like you have to go through a mourning period. You mourn the dreams you had for your child. And then you kind of get mad at God. (laughs) I did. Mm -hmm. I was upset with God. How old was um, Zila when you found out? It was the end of second grade because up until then, um, it was a developmental delay, which Mm -hmm. for me, it means, hey, he's going to catch up. Right, right, for sure. But the time came, we couldn't just keep that but I wanted to. Mm-hmm. He had to have an official diagnosis and the pediatrician concurred. And so, you know, we sat there and they said, your son's autistic. And I said, okay. Yeah. I didn't say, okay. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I cried. Yeah. I was just in severe mourning. Mm-hmm. Like it was like a loss, a loss, but my kid was still here. Yeah. Um, but then after some time with God and he, and you know what, you know, what's really cool about the God we serve. I was mad at him and he never left. Mm -hmm. He didn't say very much back to me. He just let me be mad. He was patient. He was patient with me. And that is amazing. And that was, that was probably about for six months. Yeah, I was going to ask how long that was. Yeah, it was about six months. And so he just, uh, as a, after, after that six-month period, I just, he, it was like I felt this release to just, okay, dust yourself off. You got to keep going. Now you have to fight for him. I'm going, that is not my comfort zone either. I, am not, I do not like confrontation. Mm-hmm. And now you're telling me I'm going to have to be an advocate for somebody, like be in their face yeah, and raise my hand and go, mm-hmm. hey, I need this for my kid. You're mm-hmm. not doing enough. You're not doing enough. Okay, so get, I guess God saw something in me in that you, I didn't, you didn't see know. myself. <laughs> now, did your husband handle it differently? He had to be strong for me. Okay. It wasn't until, um, it wasn't until later that I heard him in the shower one time, just bawling, oh. just bawling, sobbing. And that's not really his, the way he is. Um, but he was strong for me. And then he got to have his moment. But it was, of course, by himself. It's hard to watch our husbands, too. To Sad. break. And it's, to break. Mm-hmm. 
because they're strong. They're the man. Yeah. There are spiritual covering. They're like, mm. and when you see them break, you're going, wow, I guess it was legit. <laughs> yeah. This is hard. This is hard. Yeah. Yeah. This is a real thing. Yeah. Well, your book, um, When God Rescripts Your Life, which just came out yesterday, uh, what else was in your life that made you think, besides your son, you talked about that. Mm-hmm. What else? And it may be what you talked about earlier with your accidental marriage. marriage. <laughs> What else have you seen God do that for you with? Um, well, I had never planned on doing radio. I did radio for six years. It was not a part of my plan. It's mm-hmm. always been music, right? Mm-hmm. But wouldn't you know how God is so good? My kids were toddlers. They were still potty training. And I kind of had filled in a couple times while they were, the co-host was pregnant. And she was kind of bedridden. Is this in Nashville? It was in Nashville. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she was bedridden. So I filled in a couple of times just as a guest co-host. Uh-huh. Well, then the GM came to me and said, hey, would you be willing to do this like, you know, five days a week? I was like, okay, this is going to be awkward. I don't usually interview people. I'm usually interviewing. Uh-huh, yeah, right, right. How am I going to uh-huh. do this? Like, Was this I your don't... first like job job? Yeah. Ever. I was going to say, My, yes. You had to like go to human resources and stuff. And you're yeah. like, I've never done this. And the weirdest thing is I learned like so much. It was like a 401k. Uh, I have a boss. Like <laughs> I was, it was super like, I felt like a child. You felt like you were getting up. your first job. I got my first job. Yeah. And my first job happened to be morning show radio. Exactly. And I remember one time, I didn't know that you had to reapply for insurance. Uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't understand that stuff. I've never done that. And so like, I lost my insurance at one point because they were like, you didn't do the thing yeah, you're yeah. supposed to do. Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah. And we were like freaking out. My husband was like, Jackie, you don't know how to do this stuff. You got I'm going, I don't, it's my first job. You're like, listen, I was on the road at nine. I don't yeah. know what, how to do this. Yes. I don't know how to do this. Yeah. All that to say, so I'd never planned on doing radio, but, um, but my kids were small. I wanted to be home with them. So I took the position. So I, at five to, five to 9 a.m. And I'm so grateful that I had that opportunity to learn so much because it also prepared me to be able to write, even write this book. Mm. It also prepared me for what God had in store when it came to speaking engagements and not just singing. Mm-hmm. I'd never done that before. It's like it so bizarre how God just kind of, you have this idea, this concept, and he goes, oop. I got different plans. Yeah, that's not what I thought you were going to do, God. Mm, I don't care, Jackie. Yeah, My here we go. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you loved radio. I did. I did. My co-host was awesome. We had super fun. It was like, he was the first person I would talk to in the morning. I know, right? Yeah. And it's so weird because uh-huh. I'm like, normally I'd be talking to my husband. That'd be the first person. But you start not talking to Not at 4.30 in the morning. I know. I know. So I would come in with all these crazy stories about like times when my kid pulled the fire alarm at his preschool and he did it the next day too. <laughs> and all the fire trucks were showing up. And I'm going, oh my God, whose kid did yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys, let's get out of here. So embarrassing. I remember radio, I would come in and like do my makeup in between, in the breaks and I stuff. I did my hair yeah. and makeup too. Same uh, thing. I was in a room full of dudes and I was like, sorry guys, let me put my makeup on. Or I wouldn't wear makeup except, you know, we would have like maybe special guests come in. I'm like, oh, I should bring my makeup today. And that's, yeah. I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. And me my too. co-host would be so annoyed sometimes. <laughs> He'd be like, Jackie, put down the curling iron. Like, sorry, listen, like, I gotta do what on. I gotta do. I can still talk with the curling iron connected to my hair. No one sees you, you know? Exactly. It's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> um, I love the idea of this, this concept of this book because I think it is important for people, Christ followers, women who listen to the show most, we'll talk to them, um, to understand that there is this purpose that God has mm-hmm. on your life and that he's going to do what he needs to do to make it happen. And I think that can feel super scary in the midst of it. For sure. Like super scary in the midst of, I don't know what's happening here. But when you get on the other side of it, with what you've talked about, with mm-hmm. even the story about your son and the story about what you've seen God do since going into radio, which you never would have imagined. I think the best part is looking back and going, oh my gosh, look what God was doing. Look what he was doing the whole time I never even knew about. It, it's like a symphony. It's like watching something beautiful happen that in the minute, in the middle of it, you're like, this is painful. But then you go back and you're going, wow, you had something going I didn't get. And thank you. Mm. But there's another part to it. So 
my youngest son, who is Sorn, he is, he's, you know, the baby. It's amazing to me how God gave, gave me the perfect children for each other Mm -hmm. because my youngest son is so kind and so good. And he has this, this, this way about him that he, um, he like, he speaks for Zealand so many times. Mm -hmm. Like if I want to know what's happening, I go, Hey, Soren, what's your brother? What's going on? He goes, Oh mom, that's just movie talk. He's fine. Okay. Um, but like, he's so patient with his Mm -hmm. brother. Sometimes the other day I told, I could hear them kind of talking to each other and Zealand was saying something. And Soren was like, Zealand, you know, you have to talk more. I can't do all the talking for you. And, <laughs> and Zeeland doesn't care. Yeah. That's, a, that's another superpower Zeeland has. He doesn't care what people think about him. Yeah. Man, can you imagine having that power? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so the little one, he is um, very aware of just of, of people. So the other day he comes home from school. Or no, I was picking him up from school. And this lady stopped me and she goes, I just have to tell you, thank you for being you. And I was like, what? She goes, your son Zorn is so good and so mm-hmm. kind. My son, she said, her son is autistic. And she goes, he, he has so much patience. And he just, she goes, I walked into class and he was reading with Soren. And Soren was just reading, you know, a book to this kid. And he looks for all the misfits. My mm-hmm. youngest, he looks for the people that don't fit or yeah. don't belong or uh-huh. that have disabilities. Uh-huh. And he like takes them in. Yeah. And I just think, how in the world can this kid be that way? the only way he could be that way is obviously God designed him that way. And because he's the little brother yeah. to an autistic boy. Mm-hmm. So he is just, it's like God continuously, because I was so worried. I was going, man, what is this going to mean for Soren? Yeah. Is he not going to be able to be the baby of the family? He's going to have to be the big brother. And, and as time goes by, I see, I see the gap widening, widening, mm-hmm. widening. Well, As he's to, one at one point going to go above his brother, and he's already yeah. there. Yeah, he's already there, and so and it's going and it's going to be even more as time goes by. So, I just uh, I see the way that God orchestrated all of that, and in a way that I did not plan. Yeah, I could never have planned. It's not really what I wanted uh-huh. necessarily. Yeah, but that does not mean I didn't want my kids right. or my Zealand for sure. Because I go through this thing, I struggle with this because I have a little, this boy and yes, he is autistic, but I wouldn't change him mm-hmm. because I like his kind of crazy. Yeah. He is cool. Mm-hmm. He loves to wear hats. So it's, it's this, it's like this inner, not a, not battle. It's a wrestling maybe. Yes. It's like, I want him to be able to grow up and get married and have kids, but I don't want to change who he is. Right. Because God made him. Yeah. But I do believe he has a ministry. I just, I don't know how God's going to do it, but I know he is. And you felt that from the beginning. This is what you said in the beginning. From the beginning. Uh I don't know what it's going to look like. And it's, I mean, I try to figure it out, but I don't know. Only God knows. Yeah. You know what I think is interesting is I hear you talking about the different ways that maybe that God has shown up in this, you know, the words that you're using of like, you know, rescripting your life. I find it interesting that as humans, we see this in the scripture all the time of God's people. He's like, here he comes through. Yay, 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 we love you. And then, you know, next year they're like, where are you, God? You have left us and abandoned us. They do that all, all the, the time. time. They're yes. like going, seriously, people? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and I think they're so dumb. I'm like, you guys, he just yeah. brought you out of slavery. And they're like, can and we then, go back, please? I know. And why are you really going to make a golden calf? Right, come on. Come Have on. you not seen? Yeah. But yeah. I think this about God's people in the Old Testament. And then I look at my own life. And I mm. think, man, you have, I look back and, you know, looking back is, I think looking back is great. People say, don't look back. I'm like, no, I need to look back. I need to know well, where have, I came from. You, well, you, uh, you have to learn from your mistakes. You, learn. It, it, you, you gain wisdom that for way. For sure, for sure. But yet I'll find myself, hopefully not as often as I used to, Mm -hmm. but I still find myself sometimes wondering, God, are you going to come through? Mm -hmm. And I've seen him come through. I know. Isn't that crazy? Me too. It's like we- He comes through- We do learn. And the little. Yeah. 
And it's not always, it's not always in our timing. That's though. right. And I think that is when it is, it's not difficult to trust because I do know that now at 41 mm-hmm. that I can trust you. I've seen you move mountains. But sometimes I wonder, is it gonna Is it ha- gonna happen this time? Yeah, exactly. I know. Me too. I do too. Is, you're not you're not crazy. We all do. I think it's like, okay, I'm praying. Right. Is it gonna happen this time? Mm. My husband and I always have this thing, feast or famine, right? And then we were looking at each other the other day and we're like, but there's never been famine. Mm. Why do we keep saying feast or famine? When have we ever seen a time when there's been famine for us? Mm-hmm. No. Even in the hard times. Even in the hard times. Yeah. I've been jamming out to your album that you released, 2017. Yes. So that's uh, your latest, trust. right? Mm-hmm. My daughter and I have been listening to it, which I love her being able to listen to you. It's so fun as having a daughter. Thank you yes. for listening to it. Yes, yes, wanna... yes. But one of the yeah. one of the songs on there is called Trust. And you're one of the co-writers on that song. Where did that come from? Uh, that's for Zealand. Mm. Because uh, they're... <sighs> Because, well, I have to trust. Yeah. I have to trust. Um, because during that time that I was in that warning period, I felt like I was drowning. Mm-hmm. And I asking the why me, why me? And then just realizing, why not me? Mm. Why not me? And then you had to trust. Trust? Okay. Give me the words to say. I'm walking into an IEP meeting and I'm... I don't like doing these things, Mm -hmm. okay? God, give me the words to say, I trust that you love him more than I do. I trust that you love him more than I do. I know you do. Constantly playing Mm -hmm. over in my mind and going, trusting, 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 trusting. And it's, you know, it's like, some days it's easier to do that than others. Is it easy now? It's a daily thing for me. It is. Because now he's starting puberty. Yeah, and you're like, this is a whole new world. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, how do you walk through puberty with an autistic boy? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever heard of a book for that. Yeah, you need to write it, Jackie. There you go. I'll probably, yes, I probably will have to write it. There you go, yeah. Walking through puberty Uh and autism. Yes, together. Together. I say you just get like, you just get some like spray deodorant and every morning before you even wake, you just lift up his arms. Spray it underneath there. Get some axe. Like, no, it's not even just that, but it's also like- Emotions? No, it's not even the emotions. It's sexuality. Yeah. How do I explain this part uh-huh. of where babies come from? Uh-huh. You need to write this book because I haven't seen it. I haven't either. If anyone knows the book, email us. Yeah, please. Let us know. This is, this is brand new territory There for are us. guaranteed people listening who have walked this road before you. And so, yeah. seriously, let us know. <laughs> seriously. Seriously, we're, we're both serious. Seriously, let I mean, us know. I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, can we discuss this in these IEP meetings? Like, yeah. what do y'all do? What do we do here? Uh, I know, man. Life skills. Life skills. Washing your clothes, doing this, and let's talk about where babies come from. Yes. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Well, good luck with that. I have no words of wisdom for you on that. And I, I, I don't either have anything for myself. But so. you're figuring it out. <laughs> this is hard. Yeah, this is one of those things. That it's we're another just gonna... one of those things where you said moment by moment, having to trust. Exactly. And seeing like, okay, God, you've come through in other areas where I didn't know what it was going to look like. Exactly. And I trust that you're going to come through mm-hmm. on this one. Yeah. Give me the words to yeah. say. Mm-hmm. Give daddy the words to say. Yeah. And believe it or not, God cares about the conversations we have with our kids about sexuality. I know. I mean, that's like, we can't think like, oh, this is too little for God. No, he cares about this. He, he And he comes through on the big and small. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking down, down to this. So Zeeland just started middle school and my husband, he didn't want Zeeland to ride the bus and he never has ridden the bus. Yeah. Because- For sure. Like, he, he didn't want him to be on the, on the short bus. Mm-hmm. Just, he goes, some kids can make fun of him. I don't want him to be made fun of, yeah. okay? So this year with two different pickups and drop-offs and like the time frames, yeah. it was gonna be four hours of our day for, uh, I, for I, drop-off I, yep. in the mornings, for pickups in the afternoon. So it was gonna be insane. And I didn't want the little one waiting for, you know, that long. Yeah. Anyway, point is, so I said, Nick, let's see if he can ride the bus. He goes, no, no. I said, well, let me look at the bus stops. Let me look at the, you know, how the mm-hmm, yeah, schedule goes. Out. So I looked it up. I called the transportation, Williamson County Transportation. I say, you know, my son, blah, blah, blah. They go, well, we have a stop right in your corner. I was like, yeah, but when will he get to school? 
And when will he get off the bus from school? Well, and I just, I had been praying this prayer. I said, God put in place every single person, every situation for Zealand. I'm talking down to the person that's swimming next to him uh-huh. for them to be understanding yeah. and not think that when he's saying something, right. he's saying it in malice. Yeah. God put it, put in every situation, put yes. it together. You have to orchestrate this. Well, ah. so the transportation system, they tell me he'll be the last kid picked up in the mornings and go straight to school. And the third to the first kid dropped off after school. And I'm going, because we live super close to the school. I'm going, what? Oh my goodness. I, so I tell Nick, I'm going, Because he's not on the bus for a long time. Exactly. Yeah. And so I tell Nick, he's, he goes, I don't know, Jack. I said, well, let's just try it one day. So his file holder, I email her. I said, have Zeeland ride the bus home today. And she- Did Zeeland know that this was an option? Yes. Okay. But, and he's super obedient. So he's- Yeah. Which is also scary too. Uh-huh. Um, so she emails me back. She goes, well, he's on the bus. And I go, great. She goes, Mr. Fred is the driver. And I explained to him Zeeland's story. Uh And he said, don't worry. I have a son on the spectrum too. Did you just start crying? I was so amazed that that prayer, I mean, I know and I trust that God answers prayers, but I was like, you keep proving it over and over and over again. When am I going to get it through my thick skull? <laughs> Look, I'm crying right yeah. now thinking about it. Like the big and the small. Yeah. His bus driver Mr. has Fred. a son on the spectrum. Mr. Fred. So when he gets off the bus, he, he's uh, Zealand sitting in the front row next to Mr. Fred right there. Oh my gosh. And I ask him all the time. I was like, so Zealand, who'd you, did you sit with anybody on the bus? Well, no. I sat by my violin. Um, Because he plays violin yeah. orchestra. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So he's riding the bus. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <sighs> but that's like a huge, I know it's something small for most people, but for our family, because we've always tried to be really guarded with uh, Zealand and not put him in situations that would be, you know, mm-hmm. detrimental. Not that he would care, but detrimental. This is a This is a huge step for us. And what just a beautiful moment for you. And now for us as the listeners hearing your story to see God really, really cares about his people. Mm -hmm. He cares about that prayer that you've been praying, like put everyone that's involved in Zealand beside him, everyone. And then you get Mr. Fred. And this is the normal bus. It's just the normal bus. And I get Mr. Fred. Yeah. God orchestrated that. You couldn't. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that story because I love that. The, that was just that was just a few days ago. That's yeah. the most recent. But man. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, so um, what's next for you? You got the book coming out, um, came out yesterday. Are you doing any kind of musical touring or just speaking now? Um, I'm doing music too. Okay. I'm going out quite a bit. Like I do like two weekends a month music and then like kind of one weekend a month speaking. Okay, stuff. yeah. Because I like to be home because uh, Soren's on the swim team. So yeah. I like to be there for his swim meets. Yeah. Because he's good. Okay, yeah. I mean, he's a little chunky, uh-huh. but he swims fast. I like that. In the water, everyone weighs the same. There you go. There you go. There and you he's go. fast. Okay. He is super good. Yeah. So he is like, I, I like to be there for his mm-hmm. mates because he wins. Yeah. And gets super proud, the baby. Um. So then, actually, in a few days, we are leaving on our first Disney cruise. <gasps> oh, my gosh. It's going to be my birthday. Happy birthday. You're going to be 40. I'll be 40. Uh-huh. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean- I feel like I should be 60, but okay, 40. I feel like you've lived is, a lot of life. Yes. Yeah. So um, on the cruise, I turned 40. I didn't plan it that way. Let me tell you, Disney cruises are expensive. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've never been to Disney. We have four kids. Disney cruises though. Disney just alone is expensive, uh-huh. but Disney cruises. Yeah. I was looking up a cruise for the summertime. It was going to be like $26,000. Yeah, yeah, it's like, let's buy a car. For a family of four. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I ended up, choosing this particular week because it was hurricane season. Okay. So it's much cheaper and it's a seven-day cruise. I love it. Where so do y'all go out family, of? Uh, Port Canaveral. Okay. 
And so the kids, of course, are ecstatic. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you haven't been on one of those like singing cruises where they bring artists on. Oh, no, I've done those. Oh, but you haven't ever brought your family. I've never done. Okay. We're, we're not singing. We're not there for work. Yeah, yeah. We're just going as a family. I love it. And they've never been on a cruise. Okay. So this is going to be new so for them. Fun. So fun. Well, congratulations. I've heard they're really fun though. So I've heard they are gonna too. have a great time. Um, okay. So I always ask my guests what they're loving and what they're reading. What is, what's something you're loving and are you a reader? What are you reading? Oh, right now I'm reading The Burden is Light by John Tyson. Okay. And dude, it is a deep, heavy book. Okay. Like I have to go back and reread pages. Yeah. Like I'm only in chapter Those are two. hard. Cause you and keep, I've been reading it for yeah. a couple. Cause you, cause you open it back up and you're like, what just happened? What did, what did yes. I read? Yeah. Okay. So I have to reread. Yeah. So I'm only like on halfway through chapter two and yeah. I've been I'm reading it for like a week and a half. Yeah. I'm going, okay, going okay. back. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I just finished a book, but this is crazy. This is intense. Yeah. So doing that. Um, what am I loving? Well, what's the, I don't want to state the obvious. What's the obvious? Well, the obvious is I'm loving it. I'm loving the school year. Yeah. I'm loving fourth grade for my baby. He loves it. Um, but I'm also loving, um, I love Alexander Wang shoes. Mm. Shoes. I'm a shoe girl. You're a shoe girl? I love shoes. Okay. I'm not a shoe girl. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I love shoes. They make me happy. Really? Like I'll go basic on everything and then, Shoes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Jackie, I'm excited about your book. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And um, we'll keep jamming out to that album. Thank I you. I wrote down my favorite songs on there. Are you ready? Oh, go for it. God Who Moves the Mountains. Yes. That is a good song. Yes. Uh, that's what Soren's made you pick song. that? Actually, Soren made me pick it. Okay. Because uh, one night he woke up from uh, bed and he was, he was crying. He was scared. No, he was scared. And I said, buddy, you don't have to be scared of anything. Do you believe, do you love Jesus? He goes, yes. Do you believe Jesus lives in your heart? He goes, yes. I said, then you don't have to be scared of anything. And don't you know that God, he can do anything. He can take your fear. He can move mountains. You never have to doubt. And that song I had just heard in a batch of songs yeah. that they had sent me. Uh-huh. So I went and grabbed that, my phone. And that played, night while that he was, night, okay. In the middle of the night, I took my phone and I put it by his ear and I played him that song. And then I just started raising, I raised my hands and closed my eyes. And you could just feel like this like warm glow in the uh-huh. room. And I opened my eyes and his, he was crying. Uh. And you could just feel the presence of God uh-huh. so sweet in the room. So I was like- And you're like, I'm recording this song. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is going on the next album. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah Soren sealed the deal for me yeah, on that for one. sure. For <laughs> sure. Um, well, I love it. Congratulations on everything that you Thank got you. going on. Have fun on your cruise. Thank you. So much fun. And thanks for coming on the happy hour. Thank you for having me on the happy hour. Okay, you guys, how powerful was that when Jackie said, why not me? You know, I've thought about that reframing statement a lot when it comes to the hard things in my days. I'm so thankful to call Jackie a new friend and grateful for how God has re-scripted her life to be as He would see it best for her. Jackie's book is available now, anywhere books are sold, when God rescripts your life. Today's show was edited by Chris with Podshaper and the music was developed for the show by Matt Graham. Show notes are written by Aki Slockers, and the whole thing is organized by Lindsay Sweeney. Next week, my guest is Mercedes Cotchery. If you guys have been a longtime Instagram follower of me, you might remember that I was in North Carolina a couple years ago, and I reported to you live. I acted like I was a news anchor. I reported to you live on my Instagram stories that there was a dinner party picnic happening in the middle of this field where everyone was dressed in white. Does anyone remember this? Or you may actually know what I'm talking about. Mercedes was there and she called my name like, hey, Jamie, we had met before at another event. I went over to talk with her and I interviewed her live as if I was, you know, reporting from the streets of North Carolina. It was just my moment of news breaking. But I connected with Mercedes again and learned she's an NFL wife, an adoptive mama, homeschool teacher, a businesswoman. So I connected with her again when I was in North Carolina recently. We sat down and we talked on all of those topics, plus so much more. So she is our guest next week. Friends, enjoy your week. I hope you're getting some fall weather. Share the show with a girlfriend. I'd love for you to review the show. Have a happy hour with a friend and I'll see you guys back here next week with my friend Mercedes. Mercedes.